Right. Oh, my friends, you have no idea how amazing this is. Okay, maybe you know, but this is so amazing. It's so great to have you all here. Super excited. All right, we got some more folks joining. Be a patient for a moment while we let everybody in. All right, we have some new friends. Some, I'm not going to say old friends, it doesn't sound right. But whatever, some familiar friends. Ah, that doesn't sound right. Okay, you know who you are. All right, welcome, everybody. It is great to have you all here. Can I wish my friend a happy birthday? Always, Mom, of course. You're my mother. You can really, the floor is yours. <laughs> okay, well, it, she's your friend, too. Laurel Herman. Hi. Hey, Laurel, happy birthday. Hi. Thank you. This is a wonderful way to start my birthday. Thank you, Neshi. Thank you, Ari. Pleasure, pleasure. May 24th. It should be a, a day of lots of blessings. And don't forget, remember, Judaism teaches that on the day of our birthday, we have special power to bless others. So oh. use the force wisely. Okay. All right. We're going to um, make sure that everything's set. Yeah, I have everything set on my end. Okay. We have, um, so far, we have about 20 people on. We got some more joining. Okay. So what I want to do is, I think I'm going to formally introduce, formally, sorry, formally welcome everybody. I'm going to go through kind of like the process of how we're going to do this, you know, how the course is going to run, and then we're going to jump right in. Okay. So first of all, welcome. Welcome to the Hebrew course. It is great to have you here. By the way, just to set expectations, this is the Hebrew course. This focus is on Hebrew reading. So please, God, we'll do other courses that focus on Hebrew language and, um, and conversational Hebrew. This is focused on Hebrew reading. And in case you're wondering, I mean, at this point, you're probably not wondering, but in case you're wondering, still, this course is designed both for those that have never had the opportunity to, to learn Hebrew, as well as those that have learned Hebrew, but are looking to um, gain proficiency and, um, and accuracy. And it's going to work for, for everybody. And the reason that it works for everybody is because at its core, this course is all about, um, it's all about the fundamentals. It's going back to the foundation and building the fundamentals. Okay. Before we continue, I want to say a special thank you to my dear friend, Steve, Steve Horowitz. Thank you for being a core sponsor for tonight's series. Thank you, Steve. Lots of blessings to you and great to have you here. All right, let us let me welcome everybody before we go too far. Um, welcome, Joy, Dr. Maxi. Welcome, Laurel. Welcome and happy birthday. Um, Andrea, welcome. Mom, welcome. Felicia, welcome. Hey, good to see you. Eileen, welcome. Olia, welcome. David and Sarah, hey guys, welcome. Good to see you guys. Um, Glenda, welcome. Steve, welcome. Tony, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Um, from across the country, by you, it's like a five o'clock uh, in the afternoon. It's like just middle of the day. Adina Malka, welcome. Paula, welcome. Donna, welcome. Vlad, welcome. Victoria, welcome. Clinton, welcome, and Mazel Tov. Peggy, welcome. Alex, welcome. It is great to have you all here. Okay, this is this is going to be a lot of fun. What I'm going to do is just in order that everybody can hear, I'm going to mute everybody. Um, you have the ability to unmute yourself. The reason why I muted everybody is just so we have a nice clean background so that everybody can hear. And if there's something in the background, it's not going to disturb. So I want to go back to what I was saying about the, the scope of the course and how it's really appropriate for everybody, no matter where you are in the Hebrew reading, um, you know, in Hebrew reading proficiency, whether you have learned, but it's rusty, or you've never learned, it's all good. And, and the way I want to contextualize this is by taking you to a major league stadium, like in uh, not actually taking you to a major league stadium, but, but presenting the image of a major league stadium. You ever go to a baseball game like two hours early? Okay, I have because my kids told me they wanted to go a few hours early. So I've been to a baseball game a few hours early. And what happens in the baseball stadium on the field two hours prior or so? They have something called batting practice. What is batting practice? So the, the, the players, they get out there. There's somebody throwing, maybe the, 
the, I don't know, pitching coach, maybe, I don't know, whoever is doing it, somebody throws like lobs the baseball and the hitters, they give it in what we would say in Yiddish. I know it's not a Yiddish course. They give it a knack. They, they hit it and it's, oh, it's lovely. The kids that you see home runs and you, you might even catch a ball. I remember my kids were like, they were so convinced they were going to get a ball. Anyway, here's the thing. Um, the question one might ask if you're, if you're an MLB player, major league baseball professional player, you're getting paid, you know, theoretically, possibly millions of dollars. You need to take batting practice. Are you kidding me? But you don't know how to hit a baseball suddenly. You can't hit a baseball. You need to show up two hours before and practice your swing. And the answer is, of course, you know how to do it. But it's all about going back to the fundamentals. The greatest athletes, whether it's in baseball or football, trust me, Tom Brady is throwing passes, short passes, medium passes all off season. That's all he's doing. Well, that's one of the major things he's doing. Basketball. Michael Jordan was practicing free throws. He knew how to hit them. He practiced them day in, day out. He hit the gym. The reason is because you build fundamentals. And the more you build fundamentals, the greater proficiency you have. Athletes at the top of their game are always going back to the fundamentals, not exploring the exotic stuff, going back to fundamentals. And so whether you've Never learned Hebrew before, whether you've learned it before, or whether you can read, perhaps. This course is going to take you back to fundamentals because the more you know and practice the fundamentals, the rest, everything will flow in a much easier way. I hope that makes sense. Also, it gave me the opportunity to talk, to talk sports. So there you go. The one sport I didn't mention is hockey. Go Penguins. Anyway, not saying that there's a playoff game tonight, but maybe there is. Back to our back to our story. Everyone's like, "What is hockey?" I know, I know, it's not an Atlanta thing, but in Pittsburgh, we grew up with hockey. Um, okay, so let's jump in to our class. So here's how it's going to work. We have five sessions. The sessions are going to be approximately sixty minutes. Now, the reason why I say approximately is because it's it's really dependent on how this flows. It's not going to go longer than, let's say, an hour and a quarter, an hour and 20 minutes. Will we get everything done in 60 minutes? It's possible. If we were in person, I would have a, a better handle on, on kind of the timing. We're, I'm going to try some breakout rooms. So there's a, there's a few moving pieces here because we're doing it online. It's going it, to, please God, it's going to work great. But timing, you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit fluid. So it's going to be about 60 minute sessions, maybe a few minutes give, give, uh, here or there. Um, five sessions. The goal at the end of these five sessions is that you will be reading Hebrew. Now, here's the thing. You're not going to be what I would call rabbi speed. Now, what is rabbi speed? Rabbi speed is, right? You know, that, that whole, like really quick. I know I didn't, even, I didn't even go that far into it, but it's like rabbi speed is like very quick. You're, you're not going to likely be after five weeks rabbi speed, but the way to get there is again, fundamentals and practice. There's, there's no shortcut. There's no, there's, you can't really like, you know, jump over the, the, the building blocks. You got to take step by step and then practice the steps and keep on going and keep on practicing um, in between the sessions that we're doing. And after the fifth session concludes to keep on, to keep that going. If you keep on practicing, it's, it's not even a question. You will be able to read Hebrew, which means, and here's the cool part. Here's the payoff. You can walk into a synagogue, crack open the prayer book. Boom. You're there. You can open up an Israeli newspaper and read it, and maybe not based on this course, understand what you're reading, but you have the thrill of at least reading it. You can read Hebrew subtitles on a movie that's in English. Yes, I don't know why you would do that, but you could do that because you will have taken this course. All right, are you guys with me? Yes, all right, by raise of hand, by raise either real hand or virtual hand for those that I can't see, by raise of hand. Um, who received, I know not everyone did, who received their awesome sauce reading, Hebrew reading kit card things? Yes? No. Some of you? Really? What's with FedEx? Okay. So look, it was supposed to, oh, Alex got it. Okay. So it looks like, can't be sure, but maybe about half of you have the cards. Yes? Well, I, I mean, I just looked. So here's the thing. If you have the cards, you can practice at home 
in between the sessions easily because you have the cards. If you don't have the cards, don't worry. They're either on the way or if you signed up today, they're, they're, they'll, they'll be on the way. It should arrive in two days, if not three days. So you should get it by, by the end of the week and be up and running to be able to practice. Um, what we're going to do tonight, as I see that not everyone has, right, yeah, as I see not everybody has um, the cards, we could match up those that have the cards with each other in breakout rooms, but if you don't have the cards, then to throw you in a breakout room, you're not really going to have the materials unless we share it publicly, so we may just do a practice all together for this first session. I'm speaking it out to try to figure out a game plan because not everyone has the cards. I think I think we'll um, we may keep everybody in one room. Maybe do a few break, breakout rooms for those that have the cards. Okay. Ari, Ari can I ask a question? Yes. All right. Will we have access to recordings so that we can practice with the recordings? Absolutely. And in fact, Great. the recordings will be made available. I'll send the recordings after the sessions, either probably like the next morning. One other thing that I want to mention along these lines, and I know we still haven't jumped into it, but I think it's important that that a lot of this stuff gets talked out. So just, you know, what's going on in this course. Um, there is an app. We are using a program called read it in Hebrew. I don't know if you can see this. Can you guys see that? R I I H I can almost read it because it's backwards on my screen, read it in Hebrew. And it's got, it's an app. It's literally an app on Android and iOS, which is like iPhones, right? So it's got one, two, three, four, five, five lessons. So like, let's say you click on lesson one, boom. I'm not going to tell you what that is yet. Hey, oh, we're not there yet, but. All right. Basically, the dude just, the dude in the app, the app guy just gave it away. But here's the point. There is an app you can download. All right. It's $1.99. I try to work with the creators to get it, to get a bulk thing and to just give it to everybody. I can't. So I'm just going to have to let you do it on your own if you want to. This is a great way to practice without the I card. just downloaded it. It's very easy. So, oh, you got it already? Oh, yeah. fantastic. Boom. There you go. So yeah, it's read it in Hebrew there. Look at that. Look at you. So this is, if you don't have the cards, here's my point. If you don't have the cards, this is great for review between the sessions. If you do have the cards, it's also great because the cards can't speak. Are you with me on that? Cards can't speak, but the app. Sounds What's the name of the app? Sounds like, ah, yeah, this dude, this app can speak. It's called read, read it in Hebrew. So it's literally read it in Hebrew and it's on Apple and, and, and Android. I, I have it on, I have an Android, I have a Samsung device, so it's working smoothly on mine. If, if somebody I, have an, out, I have an iPhone and it's working and great. And it's smooth. All right. So you guys, you guys are mastering it. All right. Can We're going to jump. Yeah. Um, can you get the app on your laptop or just on your phone? No, it's a mobile, it's a mobile thing, but don't worry because you'll get, did you get the, uh, did you get the cards, Adina Malka? No. no. Really? Okay. All right. So the cards will be arriving by, by my luck, it'll be arriving tomorrow, right? Or right by our collective luck, you'll get it tomorrow morning, right after the class. Um, so you'll have the cards. If you don't have a mobile, if you don't have a smartphone or whatever it is for the apps, don't worry about it. You have, you'll have the, the, um, the flash cards and you'll be able to practice. Okay, without further ado, let's jump in. The way we're gonna do this is I'm going to teach the letters. If you know the letters, don't worry, it's fundamentals. This is batting practice. You may learn some stuff as we go through this because with each letter, I'm also gonna be sharing a bit of a spiritual insight. You see, I can't hold myself back. We're gonna do a little bit, I know, I know. Why not just Hebrew? Because I love sharing more information. So we're gonna do a little bit of insight along with the Hebrew letters, not to confuse the issue, but just to enhance the experience. You guys with me? Yes. Are we ready? I have a screen that I want to share with you with a full PowerPoint situation of all of the letters. We're going to go through it. I'll be sharing and stopping to share, kind of cutting in and out in between. And, um, and that's how we are going to do this. We're going to learn the first five letters. We're going to practice together. Then we're going to rotate. We're going to add another five letters, another few letters. We're going to compare letters to other letters. It's going to be Freilich. It's going to be exciting. All right. Remember, the main thing is to have fun, because if you're, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. We got to have fun when learning Hebrew, because Hebrew is awesome. Okay, let's, let's jump in. I am going to get my screen set for this. And we are ready to roll. 
This is exciting. It's like opening day. You guys see that? Read it in Hebrew. You guys with me? Yes. Thumbs up. Thumbs up if you can see my screen. Yes. I see waving. I see some thumbs up. Good, good, good. Okay. Great. Read it in Hebrew. All right. This is a chart or, I don't know, a list, a chart of all of the Hebrew letters. As you'll notice, there are many of them. <laughs> there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, but there's more than 22 characters here because some of them are repeated in, in various forms. As you can see, the second and third letters are similar with the, the, the distinction of a dot. We'll speak about all this. Don't worry. You don't need to figure out any of this by yourself. I'm going to go through it. We're going to go through this tonight. Um, and we're going to learn the letters. I just want to give you kind of an overall picture. Oh, very important. This is super important. Hebrew is always read right to left, right to left. Very important. Unlike English, which is left to right, Hebrew is right to left. You know the famous story with, um, who was it? Um, uh, Kissinger and, um, and uh, uh, Golda Meir. You know the this, this story where he says, to, she says, you got to take care of Israel. You know, you're a Jew. He says, look, I'm an American first. I'm a um, secretary of state second and a Jew third. And she said, perfect, because in Israel, we read right to left. Yeah, you're with me on that. So that's, that's, apparently, that's apparently a true story. But it's important to remember, Hebrew is always read right to left. All right, that's a general rule that you need to know as we jump in. I'm sharing my screen again. Let's pick it up. Okay, so now we have this screen, and now I've just revealed the big reveal. Oh, and if you have the cards, go along with me with the cards, because you have this deck of cards with all of these. These are all the cards that you have in your deck. If you have it, if not, it's on the screen for your convenience. We have Aleph, Bet, Vet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Chav, Final, Chav, Lam, and Mem, Final, Mem, Nun, Final, Nun, Samach, Ayin, Pei, Fei, Final, Fei, Tzadik, Final, Tzadik, Kuf, Resh, Shin Sin, Tuf, and Saf. Don't worry if it seems daunting. We will go through these one at a time, step by step. This is just, again, an overall picture. Okay, we begin with our very first letter. How beautiful. This letter is, of course, the Aleph. This letter is the Aleph. It is the first letter of the Aleph Bet, hence the phrase Aleph Bet. So this letter can come in different forms. Now, it, at the core of it, I don't want to get philosophical and talk about Platonic forms and trees and whatnot, but I may, I may just if I have to. But not every olive is going to look the same, but they will all follow the same basic structure where you have a point at the top right, a point at the bottom left, and a diagonal line in the middle which, uh, where, where they connect. That is your Aleph. So you'll have different forms. Um, yeah, Aleph. Now, what does Aleph do? What sound does it make? The way we're teaching it in this course is that Aleph is silent. It has no sound of its own. And you're thinking, so how does that work? Well, it really works with the vowels, right? Once we get into the vowels, then you'll see that it can take on different sounds. So for example, you can have A, or a, uh, or o, oh, or u, or e, right? Different sounds that are all based on the vowel. So the aleph sound doesn't get in the way. The a, uh, u, e, a, e, right? All of those, it's, it's, it's just really the sound of the vowel. It's not the sound of the letter. So if you want to make a sound with the aleph, I don't know what you would say, but it's kind of like, I guess the Jewish way. Eh, no, I'm kidding. The, it would be, uh, it would be a, a no sound and so on without a vowel. All right, that is the Aleph. Now let's look at some significance of the Aleph. Now the reason why we do this, um, actually, let me let me let me go back a slide for a second. Um, the, what we're going to do is, as I said, we're going to share some some uh, deeper insights into each letter. One of the reasons to read is to kind of um, help with the memory. It's going to help you remember the letters and kind of remember that hopefully remember the meaning and which letter it is and, and some of the symbolism, because all of these are good triggers for memory. There's also mnemonic techniques. 
don't ask me to spell that. There's an M and an N at the beginning over there. Mnemonic techniques where you can kind of associate a letter with a certain image, with a certain picture, with a certain symbol that kind of helps us remember it. So the idea of Aleph being silent, you might picture Aleph as a bit of an X, right? It's kind of, well, not exactly, but a little bit of an X, which is, right, a bit of a silent, a silent symbol. Okay, let's get back into the deeper significance. You have a point above, you have a point below. So there's God, there's the soul, and there's the line of connection that exists between us. So we have the Yud above. Well, you have a point above, point below, and the Torah or the faith, the, the line of connection in between. I mentioned this before, that Aleph can take on many different forms. I want to show you some of them, different fonts, different, different styles. I think it's important that, um, that you get a sense of seeing Alephs as they appear in different, in different contexts. So the first Aleph, again, right to left, the first Aleph is the one that we've been, uh, we've been showing. Um, give me a second here. There we go. Um, the next one is just a straight up a different font. You know, you see that little line on the top right, another line on the bottom left, and then, oops, sorry, and then a, and then a diagonal in the in the in the in the middle. That's also an aleph. You have another aleph, the third one, and then the fourth character. That is a script aleph, and that's going to throw everybody off because that doesn't look at all like the other forms. So don't worry about that last image. The point of this slide is just to illustrate the following idea, that olives will come in many different, different shapes and sizes. That last one is gonna be confusing because that's kind of how people write it in shorthand, but just know that olives can come in different forms, even if it's not something that you're familiar with, don't necessarily rule out that it might be an olive. It could be an olive lurking somewhere. But again, this is, this is your classic olive shape. And again, it has no sound. It's going to take along the sound of the vowel. All right, that's Aleph. Um, and, and, and I know that I muted everybody at the top, but at this point, if, you, if anyone has questions, clarifications. Can you show the back page so we can write down the, the, the mystical meaning of the letter, please? Say it one more time. Can you go? Yeah, there. There we go. Yeah. As, as I was asking you to say it again, I realized I was processing what you were saying. Yes. So we have the, the notion of the upper point, which is God, the lower point, which is the soul, and there's a line that connects. And remember, the point of this is, these insights is not to confuse or to distract from the core focus here, which is learning the letters and learning ultimately um, soon how to read and put them together or to, to gain fluency in it. The point is really to, um, to augment the experience. Okay. okay. Will this chart be in the in the material we receive, or is it only just um what you're showing on the screen? The meditations are, are on the um are on the cards as well on the back of the card. Okay. You know what? I believe so. I don't have a copy of the cards with me right now. Can somebody fact check me? No, it's not. No, Dr. Maxi, no, no, it's not. It's not. Thank you for fact checking me. That was not true. What I just said. It is not on the cards. Oh, so. We have the cards, them. the cards, listen, the cards are focused on the, on the task at hand. All right, let's, let's move on to the second letter and let's get our, let's get our bet. All right, this is the letter bet. Again, the first step in, in, in learning the letters and gaining our fundamentals is really connecting with the shape. That's a bet. And that is a vet. The bet is making a B sound. Vet is a V sound. We call it in Hebrew a hard or a soft sound. Bet being the hard sound. Vet being the soft sound. One of the mnemonics that we have for this is that bet has a button in the belly of the bet. You see what I did there with all the alliteration, right? Bet has a button, whereas vet is vacant. That is a way for you. Again, these are mnemonics. These are ways in which you can kind of connect with these, um, with, the, with, the, with the images and it can trigger a memory. This is, all, if you're, you know, there are techniques, for example, if you're learning, uh, if, if, 
if you want to learn a lot of people's names in a room, you a lot of you meet a lot of people. You want to learn the names. It's good to associate people with different things that trigger that that memory. So we're tr we're doing the same thing with the letters. Again, this shape is either a bet or a vet. If it has the button, it's a bet. If it's vacant, it's a vet. So it's either going to be a b sound or a v sound. Now it could be ba or ba or boo or bo or b based on the vowels, right? The vowel dictates what shape it takes, but the core sound would be either b or v. So it could be va, vu, ve, v, vi, right, etc. But the core is the vet, the v sound. So we've a b sound and a v sound. Um, okay, so that is the bet. Um, very important. And now we get into a quick warning about look-alike letters. And this is, in my experience, one of the most challenging elements of Hebrew. And that is that there are some letters that look really close to other letters. So I want you to work, to, I want you to be with me on this, on this slide and, and focus where I'm focusing. And I'm going to tell you where I'm focusing. On the, the, the furthest right box is, of course, the letter. What's the letter? Bet, right? This, this, sorry, Let me go back. This is the letter bet, okay? The third box from the right is not a bet. I'm not going to tell you what that letter is. We're, gonna, we're going to be introduced to it later today in today's session. But I just want to point out how similarly they look. Right, look at the look at the shapes. The top is the same, right? It then goes down very similarly. The, there's a bottom and a dot. The difference is, I want you to pay attention to the difference. The difference is that the bet has an extension on the right. You see that? It's got a little uh, porch situational on the right side. Whereas this letter, to be named later, this letter does not have the porch. So the bet has the porch, has, uh, has an area. The bet looks like a boat, doesn't it? Kind of like a sailboat, maybe? No, I don't know, maybe just me. So that's the bet and the vet. And again, it's looking like letters or these two guys, this one and this one that do not have a porch. They are not bet and vet. We will describe them later, but it's important that you kind of pay attention to that. You notice the details so that your reading fluency and accuracy, more, more accuracy than fluency, your accuracy will be there once we progress and, uh, and begin you know, breaking out into, into, into letters and, and whole phrase and, and words and phrases. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what we're doing here. Bet and vet with that disclaimer. Now you should know that bet is the first letter in the Torah. And that is an example of the letter as written in a Torah scroll. It's a large bet. Right, you see it's the same shape. It's got that little point, and then it goes, the, there's the top, and then it goes down, and then there is the bottom part. The Torah begins with the letter bet, and it's kind of like there's that forward motion. One should always be moving forward. It's kind of open, and it's kind of like pointing. It's direct. It's open direction is, for, again, right to left. It's moving forward, and the idea is forward motion. In the beginning, you start at the beginning, and you're moving forward. So again, all of these are ideas that might solidify in your mind, associating the shape with the letter and of course the sound, which is a B sound or a V sound without the dot. I should mention, and I don't want to complicate things, but in the Torah scroll, you don't have dots. So it could be a bet or a vet. The scroll is not going to help you. You just have to know. So in modern writing, we, for the sake of sanity, we add a bet, sorry, we add a dot if it's a B sound and don't if it's a V sound, but in the scroll, in an authentic Torah scroll, it will not have the dots. It will not have those symbols in it to, uh, to guide that. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes? Okay. All right. Before we get to Gimel, I want to stop sharing for a moment and check in with everybody. Make sense so far? Yes? Yes? Now, I know, I know for some of you, you're like, yeah, Aleph, Bet, Vet, we got it. I'm with you. We're taking, if, if you know this already, it's BP, it's batting practice. But even if you know it, we're solid, hopefully solidifying it and searing it 
into our brains so that we have mnemonics, we have ideas, we have, an, we have associations so that it's, it's solidified in our brains. And again, once you have those, if you have those cards, great. If you don't have the cards yet, you can go to those flashcards. One side is not going to have any clues. You flip it over and the other side is going to have the name and the sound, the mnemonic and all that information, even a place for you to practice writing the letter. There's a few boxes where you can, you know, write it, practice writing it yourself. There's different techniques to get you into the flow of the letters. It's really important that you, you do that in the practice. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, let's continue. I'm going to share my screen. By the way, don't be shy. Really. It's, uh, it says in Pirkei Avot, Ethics of Our Fathers, that the way to gain wisdom is through engagement and questioning. So please jump in if you have questions or comments. I'm going to share my screen. Let's continue with Gimel. And don't wait till I ask if you have questions. If you have a question, just unmute and jump right in. Um, okay, we are up to the third letter. The third letter is the letter Gimel. Lucky Gimel. If you have a dreidel, the Hanukkah top, and you spin it and it lands on this letter, you win everything. You clean out your friends and you go home as the lucky dreidel spinner. All right, so Gimel. Gimel is the, is the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And the sound, as indicated by the first letter that we're using in English, the G sound, is a G sound. It's a hard G. It's not Jimmel, right? It's not even Jimmy Kimmel. It's Gimmel, straight up Gimmel, right? With a hard G, Gimmel. Um, glamorous Gimmel. Why do we call Gimmel glamorous? Well, we're trying to remember it here. And glamorous Gimmel has a high heel. You see what we did there? Yeah, yeah, you didn't think that was gonna happen. No one saw that coming right there. Glamorous Gimmel has a high heel. Gimmel is high stepping, night out on the town. Watch out, Gimmel is, Gimmel is going. Gimmel is going out. So look at the Gimmel, right? You have that shape. It's kind of got like the small top, it goes down. It's got that separation. It kind of looks like a high heel. Glamorous. This is the mnemonic. This is the way that you can perhaps remember it. So when you encounter it in writing, immediately you gimmel and good sound and you're good to go. All right. Glamorous gimmel has a high heel. Now gimmel. Oh, look at this guy. Don't confuse gimmel with a look, another lookalike letter or its lookalike letter. This is another letter, which I will not name. We're not going to cover this one tonight. This is another letter of the Hebrew alphabet that looks very similar to Gimel. The only distinction really is, unmute yourself. Tell me what the distinction is. Read the shape. Flat. It's flat, exactly. But it doesn't work with that letter, but we'll, we'll leave, leave that for later. Um, so Gimel has the glamour, has the high heel. The other letter does not. It is not a Gimel. I can't tell you how many times that, that I've seen this in practice, in action, where these letters can be confusing. But again, the more you have the fundamental seared in your brain, it's going to be smooth and it's going to be more seamless. All right, now an insight into Gimel. Gimel is related to the Hebrew word gomel, which means benefactor which means someone who is helping someone else, someone who is giving to someone else. And the nature of a benefactor is to run after the opportunity to give and to help. You see this fellow, he's running, well, gently running, maybe like, you know, a golf jog to, um, to help someone else out. And so you see the legs. Again, it's another way to remember the, the gimel, either the high heel, the glamour, or the gomel, the one who is the benefactor running after the other or the cause, the good cause to help out. Okay, these are all mnemonics to remember gimel. Any questions or comments on the gimel? So far, so good. How do you spell gomel? Um, in gomel which... in English? 
In English and Hebrew. Yeah, in English, you would do it. Um, Gomel would be G-O-M-E-L. Gomel. In and Hebrew. in Hebrew, it's right down here. But we haven't, I mean, we haven't covered these letters yet. We just did the Gimel. Um, but that's in that, that lower box, the lower left box. That's how you would write that and spell that in Hebrew. But again, that's, uh, that, this is a little advanced based on where we're up to right now. Okay, let's move on to our fourth letter. Um, bet and Vet, I'm combining into one letter. So we did the Aleph, Bet, Vet, the Gimel, and now we're up to the Dalit. The Dalit is our fourth letter. And as its name indicates, it makes the D sound, D, Dalit. Um, and it looks like a hammer, maybe. If you really look somehow, maybe. Or a it grogger, looks like a, a grogger. Huh? A grogger. Looks like, yeah, but grogger's not going to work. Grogger would be great for Gimel, but <laughs> we don't want to confuse things. This is allegedly like a hammer that can dent things. I guess it has a handle. I mean, it's a big, that's a, that's a really long hammer over there um, that can dent things. Again, the key here is the d sound, dent, dalit. That is the sound that it makes. Now, another way of, uh, of looking at this, literally, um, in the context of what we said before about the gimel is, oh, there we go. There's our hammer. Ah, look at that. Look how convenient that is that it pops right up there on our, uh, on our slide. So we have the hammer that can dent things. That is the Dalit. Um, in the context of what we explained just a moment ago with the Gimel, remember who the Gimel was? Unmute yourself. What was the Gimel symbolically? Not the high heel, the other symbolism. Gimel. The benefactor. Gimel. The benefactor. benefactor, good, good, good. The benefactor, the one who's running after the other, right? So he's running after the other. He's the giver, the Gomel giver. Oh, that's good. Gimel, Gomel giver. And he's running after the other fellow, who is facing, if you will, forward the other way, right? The Dalit it stands for Dal, which is destitute, the, the person that doesn't have and is in need. The nature is that the person may not want to turn back because out of embarrassment or whatever it is, so they're faced forward, like the Dalit that faces forward away from the Gimel. Are you with me? By the way, lest you think this is random symbolism, I need to tell you that what I'm showing you right now you know where this comes from? This comes from the Talmud. This is a Talmudic teaching about the spirit of the letters. Gimel is giving and Gimel is running. It's the one who wants to give. And the Dalit is the recipient, but the nature of the recipient sometimes is that there's a bashfulness or, um, you know, uh, um, a bit of a, a humbleness about receiving. So it's you know, that the recipient is looking the other direction. So the gimel is running and the dalit is faced away from the giver. Again, gimel is the giver. Dalit is the dal, which in Hebrew means the destitute, the pauper. That is the D sound, the D sound. And with all of these letters, I'm going to emphasize what I said before. By the way, when everyone has their cards I'm going, to be, I'm going to be less on the, on, the, on the PowerPoint and more that I could see you. The reason why I'm keeping this up, the, uh, the, my screen up, is because I know a lot of you don't yet have the cards, and this is your only visual for this course. So as, as, as much as I'd like to see everybody and, and interact that way, um, I think it's important to leave this up as much as possible. Um, remember, all these letters, we haven't yet even touched on the vowels. That's a, we're going to have that in our lessons coming up and, and, and all of their nuances, and it's going to be amazing. But remember, a gimel, which is a g sound, could be ga, ge, go, gu, etc. The dalit could be da, de, do, do, di. It could be all sorts of permutations of the dalit, the essential core d sound. So we have here on this screen, we have the gimel, the g, and we have the dalit, the d. Rabbi, yes. um, does Hebrew have like A E I O U? Do they have the same vowels that we do? Yeah, yeah, it has the same vowels, but the vowels are not typically not written out in letters. It's indicated with dots and other symbols, dashes and dots, which we'll get to again. Not today, not not this week, 
It's going to be in one of the upcoming lessons. We're going to start breaking into the nekudot, the vowels. And again, we're going to go this methodically. And it may seem for some of you, or even if you're learning for the first time, be like, okay, I got it already. I know I'm going in a methodical pace. I'm going with a pace intentionally to make sure that this is as seared as possible in our brains for the recall. The question is not when I put it up and we're talking about the letter, do you see what the letter is because it has the thing underneath it? The question is, when you're looking at a whole page of a bunch of these letters, are you able to pick out that letter when you see it and immediately recall, oh, that's an aleph, oh, that's a bet, oh, that's a vet, that's a gimel, that's a dalit. That's going to be where the rubber meets the road, and that's why there's no shortcut. You could learn it in five minutes, and then, you know, easy come, easy go. The point is to brand it almost in the brain so that it's going to come back when you need it, when you're reading Okay, so we have the Aleph, the Bet, the Gimel, the Dalit. Let's do one more letter before we practice. Ari, and, can, yeah. Robert, can I question? Sure. So these mnemonic um, symbols are really helpful in remembering the letters, but there, each letter is an entire world. So for instance, like the Dalit, that has many other meetings too. You know, sure. like, you know, correct, you know, King David, I mean, you wouldn't think of him as destitute or dull. Right, but right. You, but you could interpret that as being part of humility or whatever. So right. I just want to clarify that this is not the, the characterization of each letter. It's simply a device, correct? Correct. But, it, the right. the Talmud, but the Talmud, though, used this, but, but there are many worlds within the letters. Correct. correct. Yes. Thank you for clarifying that. And it's very important that that, 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 that that be emphasized. Yes. What we're doing is we're giving mnemonics. And the Talmud does not do the one with glamorous gimbal with the high heel. That is ours. That is not the Talmuds. The Talmuds is this one, Gimel Dalit, Gomel Dalim, the one who gives, the one who receives, the one who's running after, the other one's almost running away, you know, because, uh, you know, a bit bashful. That is a Talmudic device and a Talmudic exposition, by no means the only meaning of, the, of, the, of this interplay, but one, that the Talmud cites. But overall, the mnemonics that we're giving are just for the sake of helpfulness and for utilitarian purposes, but not for a, uh, you know, a be-all and end-all scholarly um, end. All right, but but good for, thanks for clarifying that. Let's jump in now. Oh, before we go on to the next letter, again, we have lookalike letters, right? This would be accompanied by an alert, flashing lights, perhaps. Be aware, be careful that we have a lookalike letter for this one as well. This is our Dalit, this is our hammer, the denting Dalit on the right. And that is, I'm not going to mention it because it's not in today's session. We're not up there yet. This is another letter that looks very similar. Again, I have seen with my own eyes countless times where these two letters get mixed up. And, and maybe you've had this experience yourself. If you've learned before, if you practiced before, and then you've kind of, you know, th these two letters have, uh, have, have become confusing. The, we, we look at the letters. Look at the shapes, notice the distinction. The dalit that we're focused on now has a bit of a longer top and the right side. Again, I'm just breaking down the mechanics of this. This right, the, the leg does not stem, right? From the edge of the top, it's in a little bit, right? You see that? Whereas this letter is one single stroke of the pen, right? Or the quill, it goes down and it's right there. This is two strokes, one, and then you move off the edge a little bit, and then you draw a downward stroke. So it's different. These are two completely different letters, different sounds, different shapes, different names, different energies, two different letters, but they look, especially when you're looking at a bunch of letters quickly, they could get, they could get mixed up. So remember, the one on the right is the Dalit. The one on the, on the left is relative to the Dalit, an imposter. Okay. No, no, uh, no disrespect meant for our letter on the left, but again, with regard to the Dalit, it is not the real deal. Let's move on to our fifth letter or sixth, depending on how we're counting, and that is the letter Hey. Okay, this is the letter Hey. Now, you could have written in English H E Y if you wanted to, it doesn't have to be H E I, probably because Hey would almost sound like we're saying hi to this letter, but this is the name of the letter, it's called a Hey, like its English letter indicates, the sound of the letter is a sound. It's a, it's a breath 
a breathy sound. So imagine, you know, that breathy sound without any articulation of the articles of speech of the mouth, right? We're not making it into an A, a B, a C, the or an Aleph, a Bet, the Gimel, Dalit, etc. Where all we're doing is the pure breath. That is your hay. Your hay is pure breath. There's a mnemonic, like a breath of air. Hey, his foot is broken. All right, whatever. I'm not saying these are great mnemonics. I'm just saying these are mnemonics. These are techniques that might help you remember. You look at this letter and you see that the right side is unbroken. The right leg, the right foot is unbroken. The left is broken in the sense that there's a gap over here between the little foot and the main top body of the letter. So this is the letter Hey. It has a broken foot or a broken leg, so to speak. Um, and that is, uh, that is the letter. Again, it's a breathy letter without any, um, without any articulation. All right. And again, this letter could be Ha or Ha or Hey or Who or He. And I know it's, I'm, I'm, as I'm saying it, it's taking on other sounds, but it's primarily a breathy sound. Okay. Hey is also, let me give you a bit of a spiritual symbolism. It says that God created this world with the letter Hey, which means that whenever a person feels stuck, we have to know that there is a way out. There's always a way. There's always an escape hatch. All right. There's always a way out of any predicament. We believe that. We really do believe that that there is a way out, there is a solution to all the problems. And if we look hard enough, we can find the opening, the gap. God didn't create a closed world in which there's no escape. There is a way out of challenge and difficulty. Okay, so that's our letter Hey. So what we've done thus far is, and let me show you on this chart what we've done. We've done these following letters. So at this point, I'd like everybody, please, everybody to unmute yourselves. And although I can't see you all, and this is the drawback of keeping my screen up the whole time here, but although um, I can't see you all, I want to hear you all. And I want to, together with you, say the names of the letters. And, and, and it's important that you, even if your mind sees it and your brain tells you what it is, it's important that you verbalize it, it concretizes it, it sears it in your mind, in your memory, to a greater effect than just uh, to a greater um, uh, extent than just picturing it in your mind and, and not, not verbalizing it. So let's do this together. We're going to start with the top right letter and we're going to go across almost all the way to that letter that we just covered. So let's do it together. Aleph. Good. Okay. Gimel. All right. Remember, let's go along as it becomes bold on the screen. All right. Next. Dalit. Excellent. Hey. All right. Good. So again, I just want to go through this one at a time. Aleph, we said, has no sound. Right. Aleph has no sound. Aleph takes on the sound of the vowel. The next one was bet. Bet has the button right in its belly or it has a button in the middle and it's a bet sound. The bet has a void, it's vacant and it makes the v sound. The gimel is our glamorous gimel with the high heel, right? It's, the, it's also the gomel, the benefactor running after the other. That is the gimel shape. Dalid is the um, the 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 sound, dalit. It's uh, the, the mnemonic that we had is the hammer that dents. It's the denting hammer. It's also the, the dal, the popper, who is turned away from the giver, from the benefactor. And finally, we have, sorry, I went the wrong way. Finally, we have our letter, hey, which is the um, breath of fresh air. And hey, his <laughs> foot or leg is broken. It's got that open over there, opening over there, which of course we said on a mystical level is um, is, is is a way out 
when things get a little bit uh, a, a, a little bit uh, tricky. Okay, so here's what we are going to do right now. I want to do this once again. And again, by next week, everyone's going to have cards and I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. But right now, to know who does and who does it and only do breakout rooms for those that have so they can practice without this, it's just going to be too, too difficult. I'm estimating it's too difficult to pull off effectively. So we're not going to do breakout rooms tonight. But please God, next week we will. So we're going to do this one more time together. So as you see it become, become <laughs> that navy blue color, jump in. Even if others are saying it, I ask you, please, on your own, even if you don't want to open your mic, I'd ask you to open your mic so we have a nice uh, a voice together. Cool. But either way, please verbalize it so that you get practice saying the letters. Let's do it together. All right. When you see a turn blue, jump in. Okay, excellent. Excellent. We have we yeah. have a bunch more letters to learn. We're going to do more mnemonics. And again, each letter on its own, you know, manageable. But we're, we're, we're learning a bunch of letters and it's it, it's it's your the, the work here is to um, to go over the letters and to make sure you know the shapes and the letters and the sounds, you know, it's solid because without the letters, the letters are literally the building block of reading because these are what makes the sounds. Yes, we're gonna have the vowels, which play a huge role. We'll have that coming up, not today, but coming up in, in the next few sessions, but we need to have a solid foundation in the letters themselves. Okay, every letter has a unique shape and um, hopefully this is, uh, this is getting solidified. All right. I have a question. Yes, jump in. So when you say the letter has no sound, uh, we yeah. basically saying that there's no English uh, letter that sort of is associated with it? Excellent question. Excellent question. You could say that the letter A is similar to the letter Aleph, right? Mm -hmm. That first letter, you could say that the letter A, let me just highlight that one, is similar to that letter. Why do I say that it has no sound? Why not just say it's an A? Because that's the way it's explained in the sources, in Jewish sources, that it, it really doesn't have a sound. It really takes on the sound of the vowel. So if the vowel makes an a ah sound, uh, just to just to explain what I mean. If you take the, let, let's let's use the second letter as an example, the b sound. So this could be ba, be, bo, etc. Let's say those three things. Imagine if you take that vowel sound, right? You take the b and you make it go ba. So what <laughs> happened from b to ba? It went ah. Well, that's your aleph. That's your aleph. Ah is ah. In other words, the aleph doesn't add to the vowel. Are you with me? What I'm what I'm saying here with the with the yes? Yes. Sort of. Yeah. Okay. So basically, and again, this will make so much more sense when we get into the unit on the vowels. So so just it's not going to make a hundred percent sense, but hopefully just a little bit. The aleph, you could say it's an A, but really more precisely, in like Emma Cigarette, and like in truthfulness, it really doesn't have a sound. It takes on the sound and the nuance of the vowel. Okay. Um, yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, so let's now jump into our next set of letters. Okay, so we did five. We have another number of letters to go through. And again, we're gonna go through it step by step to make sure that we, that we got this. And once again, if you have a question, comment, jump in and let's schmooze. All right, here we go. This is letter Vav. The letter Vav, as perhaps it sounds, makes the V sound. And you're probably thinking, wait a second. We literally had a letter called the vet that makes the V sound. And my answer to you is, yes, Hebrew has two letters that essentially make the same sound. And you're wondering why. I don't know if I have a good answer for that, but they are different letters, even though they sound the same. That's the way it is. They're different letters. They have different energies. But when you speak it, it has a similar sound. Vet and vav, they both make that V sound. Okay, this letter, here's your mnemonic to remember it. This is the letter that is very straight and very thin. It's the, it's the only letter, well, uh, yeah, more or less the only letter that is pretty much a straight line. 
right? Very straight and very, it's got a little top, a little head at the top, but it's pretty much just very straight, very thin, a line down. That is your vav. The vav also could look like hooks. You see that? Looks like hooks. A hook joins two elements together, right? You see that? You see how the hook is, uh, is joining? And the vav, just so you know, is a prefix that links words, phrases, and chapters and bespeaks general continuity. The letter vav is sometimes used as a core letter in words, but it also, at the beginning of a word, connotes the linkage of two ideas together. Like the prefix, the Hebrew prefix, that means and. Like um, Reuven and Shimon, two names, two people, let's say Reuven and Shimon, the first two sons of Jacob, you would say in Hebrew, Reuven, the Shimon. Reuven, ve, the letter vav, is the and prefix. So just like a vav looks like a hook, which links, the vav is a prefix that links words, phrases, and chapters, and bespeaks general continuity. Again, I just want to go back a little bit. That is your vav. Your vav makes the v sound, is very straight, very thin, and it's a linking letter. Okay, when it becomes the beginning of a, of a word. Oh, look at that, vavs everywhere. Why are there vavs on my hooks? Because this is our Hebrew course. All right, next, moving along. We have the letter Zion. Okay, now Zion, you might say, looks a little bit like the vav that we just had, and it does. The distinction is that the Zion has, get ready for this one, a zigzag, right? Whereas the vav was very straight, which you noticed before. Let me go back to the vav a little bit, right? The vav was very straight, straight line down. The zion, zion is zig. Wow, that's uh, we need a disclaimer on that one. Need a bit of a uh, a disclaimer for medical purposes. Yeah, zigzaggy. It's that it's that zigzaggy um, situation. So vav very straight. Zion zigzaggy. This is important because this is another one of those two letters. And these time, this time, these guys are back to back that sometimes get confused. When you're reading Hebrew, you got to pay attention. Is it straight or is it going a little bit this way, then that way, and then the other way again? You see how that goes? I'm going to take my mouse. I, I think you can see my mouse, right? The top is a little slanted. Then it goes this way, that way, and the other way. I think it's important to mention um, I think I feel it's important to mention about my grandfather, a blessed memory who passed away just a few weeks ago. And my mother is here and Leah is here. And um, my grandfather was a scribe. And I saw him write these letters, handwrite these letters countless times with precision, the accuracy of a scribe. And a scribe, you got to get it right because someone else has to read it and they have to read it right. And it's got, it's got to look correctly in the scrolls. Okay, so this is your Zion as opposed, again, to your Vav. Your Vav is straight. Your Zion is zigzaggy. And, of course, it makes the Z sound. Not the S sound. That's an S sound. It's not an S. It's a Zion. Z. Mezuzah. Look at that. Said no one ever, right? Z. It's a zigzag Zion sound. All right? Here we go. Zion. Zion in Hebrew. In other words, this letter, Zion, there's a Hebrew word called Zion, and it means weaponry. And I know what you're thinking. That weapon literally is straight. That should be a vav. I know. I'm with you. It's imperfect. Nonetheless, Zion does mean weaponry. And um, the idea here is Zion is also the seventh letter, numerology. In numerology, it's the seventh the seventh day of the week of Shabbat, and Shabbat is our secret weapon to in a good way, in a good way only, to bring light into the world. In a dark world that so often is filled with all sorts of negativity, Shabbat, the day of rest, is our secret weapon to bring harmony, peace, love, light, family, community, spirituality, God, meditation, prayer, food, right? All these wonderful themes into our lives and into the world that is Zion, that is seventh. 
Let's continue. We have now the letter Chet. Now the letter Chet makes a Ch sound. This is one of the favorite Hebrew letter sounds because it's the one that is very hard to do if you're not familiar with it. So it's the Ch sound. And there's really no other way for me to say how to say it other than try to clear your throat really obnoxiously. Ch, pretend that no one's around, pretend that no one's listening, pretend that it's just you, right? Dance like no one's watching and Ch, like no one's listening, baby, right? You Ch it up. That is your chet and chet. The mnemonic is it looks like a help me out here, right? Oh. Clinton can help me out here. What does this look like? A chupa. Chupa. This looks like a chupa, which again begins with the letter chet. Chet. Chupa. Yes, chet like a chupa. Boom, mazal tov, right? You see the chupa, and it's eh, you know this chupa. Could have of all the chuppas that we could have chosen here, an abstract yeah, chuppa here. The chuppa, chuppa is a chuppa, <laughs> true. Um, it's got the side, it's got the top, and it's got the side again. That is like the letter chet. Again, these are mnemonics, <laughs> these are techniques, visual techniques, so that you can identify it, recall, and get it seared in your brain. Chet, chuppa, ch sound, that is the shape. Chet is shaped like a chuppa, a wedding canopy. Oh. Let's get an insight into marriage now while we're at it. A true marriage transcends nature and logic for it is a soul based, sorry, for it is based on a soul commitment. In other words, it transcends the logical or the, the emotional. It's a spiritual connection. And that is symbolized by the fact that Chet, by now you should know which number letter it is if the Zion was seven. So the Chet is number eight, right? That's a Chet. And we know that eight is always representative of that which is supernatural beyond nature. Seven days of the week, and eight is the one beyond. It's the one that's beyond nature, and that is symbolic of the chet, the chuppah, like marriage, which is meant to transcend the natural. It's a commitment. It's a covenant that transcends the natural order. That is your chet and some insights. We're going to move on to the next letter. Remember, the key here is to learn it now, if for the, either for the first time or review it now to solidify it, and then keep on learning throughout the week with the app, with the flashcards, et cetera. All right, the next letter, I'm going to hum a tune. All right, I'm not going to do the whole thing. Tet is like a teapot. I hope you picked that up on what's that tune that I was doing, right? Tet is shaped like a teapot. It's got the little handle. Here is my handle. Here is my spout, right? Handle on the right, spout on the left. That is your mnemonic. That's your visual cue that you're looking at the letter Tet. It makes a T sound like teapot, T, all right? The letter Tet is also the, the ninth letter, right? We did seven, eight, and now nine. Nine is when a child is born after nine months of pregnancy. And the letter Tet is also the first letter of the word Tov, right? Tov, t Tov, which is good, right? Tov Ma'od, very good. So Tov and the letter Tet, nine. So the, the idea here is that God knows what is objectively good for us, and that is the blessing. Now, take a look at this, and you're going to see two letters that look very similar. Again, I'll say what I said before. These are two letters that very often are confused. And you might be looking at them and saying, well, what is the difference? What is the difference? Look at, look at the letter on the right. Look at the letter on the left. And the core difference is, that the letter on the right, which is our letter, has a tear in the top. It's a letter tet. It has a tear in the top. The other letter, which I will not name now, I don't want to confuse anybody, does not have that tear in the top. This one is torn in the top. It's like a teapot. And it is the letter tet, not this letter, even though it is a similar shape. All right. Let's continue with our next letter. The next letter is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Sometimes we'll see it as just almost just slightly bigger than a dot. And this is the letter Yud. This is the letter Yud. 
smallest, like a Yid, like a Jew, the Torah says that the Jews will always be the fewest of the nations, which I think we kind of know is, uh, is the truth. We're, we're not that, I mean, I'm sure there's other peoples that are smaller, but amongst the major religions, certainly the Jews are the fewest. It's the smallest letter. So Yud, Yid, again, these are mnemonics to help you try to remember it. These are not written in stone, but these are mnemonics, um, visual and audio and uh, and 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 audio tunes, uh, not tunes, um, techniques to um, tricks to to remember this. Rabbi, Yod, you said yeah. that um, the Jewish people would always be a sm the smallest nation. The Book of Deuteronomy. I can't tell you chapter and verse, but it's in oh. there. It's in the five books. Okay. It's in the Bible. How did the Torah know? The Torah knows these things. Okay. Um, Yud. Yud alludes to God who is one and transcends all limits. A Jew is small but powerful like God's name. Okay, again, just some insights into it. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to review the last, the five letters that we just learned, and then we're going to introduce a few more letters, and then we're going to close it out for today. So we got a little bit more to do, but first, a little bit of review. Let's do this together. We have the first really five but six letters highlighted in blue we did the olive let's go through them together can you see my mouse and the little yeah. uh, mouse that's okay yes. So yes we're gonna do the mouse as i move this thing let's read the letters together or name the letters together let's start with excellent let's keep on going as i advance this one second. Yeah. Zion. I remember the Vav was like the very straight line. The Zion is the zigzag. Let's keep on going. Chet. Like the Hopa. Chet. Like the teapot. Yeah. Yod. Like the Yid. Like the small letter. Okay, good. All right. Very good. Very good. Now let's keep on going inside and we are going to teach another few, present another few letters and their mnemonics. And then we're going to do a final review and close it out for today. And remember the mechanics, 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 and practice, 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 Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. All right, next, we're going to do the next letter here, which is the letter cuff. The letter cuff has a twin that does not have the dot. Again, like the bet and the vet, this is the cuff and the chuff. The chuff also makes that ch sound. Ready for the mnemonic? You're going to love this. Cuff has a cough drop. Yeah. Cuff has the cough. You're with me? The cough drop. And chuff does not. So it has the hoarse voice, the, the hoarse voice sound because it does not have the cough drop. So I'm going to rewind this a bit. Here are your letters. Your letter cough and your letter chuff. Cough, the cough drop, chuff, the non-cough drop. These are the look-alike letters, if you recall, to bet and vet. Remember, I, I leaked that information before. I showed you the bet and the vet. The difference is... The bet and the vet had the extension on the right. It had the little platform on the bottom that extended out the little deck of the ship that extended or the boat that extended to the right. These don't, they're curved. It's a top, a right side, and it goes straight down to the bottom, almost like a backwards letter C. This is a cuff and this is a cuff, cuff with the cough drop, cuff, without it. Let's continue. Um, all right, cuff means to bend and signifies submission to God's sovereignty. So the idea of bending, it's like a curved letter. Cuff also means to subjugate oneself. All right, that's a little bit of a, again, a, a bit of a different concept that requires some Hebrew knowledge, but nonetheless, if this helps, then uh, we have it up here for a few seconds. I do want to move on to the final letters. Cuff not only has a, has a twin letter, which is cuff, but it also has another form, which is a final letter. So here's what I want to say with these letters. There are six versions. Wait, hold on. There are 
four versions of the letter. Let's go back, right? Version one, cuff. Version two, chaf. Hold on. Version three, final cuff. When the cuff appears at the end of a word, stick with me on this. When your cuff is at the end of a word, you draw it's written, it's 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 um it's drawn or its appearance is modified. Instead of being rounded with a flat bottom that is um, horizontal, it goes vertical, straight down. It's kind of like the peg to, to hold the line at the end of the word so the letters don't, don't fall, don't, don't push further. It's the final cuff and the final chuff. Each one has a final version to it. So there's the cuff and the final cuff and the chuff and the final chuff. And then we have one more letter to learn. But again, I just want to, I'm going to go back and forth for these a few times just to solidify it, hopefully. Cuff on the right, chuff on the left, right? K sound, ch sound, cough drop, ch hoarse voice. And the final versions, in other words, the same letters, but when they're written at the end of a word, the end of a word, not a middle of a word. That's what it looked like before. At the end of a word, it looks like this. Final cuff, final cuff. When you see these letters, there's a, they are a version of the cuff and the cuff that appear at the end of a word. Now, does anybody have any, a question on this concept of a final letter? Does this make sense? Not every letter obviously has a final letter, but certain letters have a, have a version, a different version of how it's drawn, how it's shaped, when it comes to the end of a word. It looks like a dollar though. It does. Excellent. It does. It's it's a longer, excellent. It's a longer dollar. In fact, if you were writing, let me think how to say this. If you were using line paper, okay? If you were, like, let's say you were using, um, you know, line paper. So your letters, let's say, would be between the two lines. So the dollar would start like, you know, inside the lines by the top and end right by the bottom, in between the two lines. Your cuff and your final cuff and final cuff and the cuff and cuff would also fit in there. But the, these final letters would go below the line. They would extend below the line. So the line, I'm going to use my mouse here, would be kind of like right there okay. where I'm going back and forth with my mouse. This is going, it's going past. Likewise, the final cuff also. So when you see these letters in print in Hebrew, you'll see them extending below the median endpoint of the usual letters of every other letter it's going it's going beneath the line there's a few letters in the hebrew alphabet that actually do that and i next week i'll share an insight if i remember about greece greece right greece remember <laughs> people? no kidding the country greece g-r-e-e-c-e -E -E. we'll share that next week all right we have one more letter to learn then we're going to review and then we're going to wrap okay um the final letter that we're going to learn today is the letter Lamed. Lamed. Letter Lamed. Okay. The Lamed looks like a lanky ladder. Honestly, if somebody asks you to climb the Lamed, I honestly would decline. Nonetheless, the mnemonic here is a lanky ladder. Why? Because the Lamed, like I just mentioned with the final cuff and final cuff, the Lamed extends above the line. The lamet has a tall top that extends like th this shape right here. This top and this bottom would fit in the lines. That top is much higher than the other letters, right? Imagine like um, another letter like the um, the dalit, right? So it's kind of like this, but it's whatever. But it would start like right around over there. This letter is like juts up. So it's like the ladder that extends upward. It, it scaffolds up into the next, you know, the next floor, the next uh, realm above. So lanky ladder, it's a ladder that goes up. It makes the, it makes the L sound, ladder, lamid, L sound. It could also, I don't want to confuse things, but it could also look like. Uh, it's a lookout. It's oh, oh, good, good, excellent. On the top of a, a lookout, you see? I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's a lookout, right? It's got that little tower perched up there. 
perfect. You know, down on my street, right before I started the class, there was this truck, this bucket truck that looked very much like this. They were installing some Google fiber lines on our, on our, um, on our street. But anyway, <laughs> so this, um, this situation, yeah, it's the lookout or some sort of, um, well, bucket truck doesn't work because it's not an L. But yeah, ladder, lookout, those are your mnemonics. Another, if you, uh, I don't want to confuse things, but if you take the chaf and the vav that we learned about and you stack them, boom, you get that. And in numerology, the chaf is 20 and the vav is six. So you add them together and you stack it, you get 26, 26, which is the numerology of God's name. And of course, that's a reference to the fact that it's the tallest letter because if you break it down, it's the numerology of God's name, which again is shows the grandeur of God. Make God and his greatness the center point of our lives, which is going to be our final lesson and insight for tonight. So let's review what we've done. And, um, and this, and this, will, uh, this is how we're going to close it out. We're going to go through the letters. Let's do it together. By now, I hope that you've seen the shapes, understood the mnemonics, and uh, committed at least some of them to memory if you haven't already. And over the course of this week, that is going to be the task to literally go over these letters um, on the app or on the cards. If you have them, if you need materials, please reach out to me, call me, text me, email me, you know, send me a letter. I'm kidding. It's going to take too long, but just <laughs> let me know if you need materials. I could send you some of these slides. I, I, I don't feel, I, I don't think I need to send everybody this whole um, uh, slideshow, but if you, if you want a few slides, email me or text me or call me and I'll send some stuff to you. But let's go through these together. Remember, unmute yourself and I want you to practice saying the names of the letters. So let's start with, uh, with the first one. Let's do it together. As soon as you see it light up, go for it. Bob. 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 Brian. Brian. Good. A zigzag. Excellent. Yes, Chet. 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 Remember Chet Chet. for the chupa. Good. Next. Chet. 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 Good. Good. Cough. Good. It's got the cough drop. Uh, cough. Okay. Cough. So now look at this. Cough. We have only one of the final cough. letters representing. So remember, final. this is the one that does not have the dot. So this is going to be final chaf. Final chaf. Final chaf. Excellent. Remember, cough. this is your chaf. Chaf. Well, let me go through it. So your cuff, your chaf, and now you have your final chaf. This this chart does not have the final cuff, but it, it does exist in Hebrew. There are words that end with the final cuff. It's rare. This is more common. But there is an option with the dot, but it's not represented here. And the final letter that we just learned is Lamed. Lamed, the lanky ladder lookout letter. Okay, friends, friends, um, I hope that you have um, enjoyed the mnemonics. Um, I think it's uh, again. I know. I know. I'm a bit of a broken record here, but my goal is to burn this information to help you burn it into your memory because that's what this is all about. There's no, there's no shortcut to, to knowing it and recognizing it. The goal is that you should recognize it when you see it, immediate recall without thinking, just like you read whatever native language, I'm assuming it's you know, mainly English, right? You look at it, you identify it, you see it right away. You don't need to think, well, what is that letter? What is the mnemonic? It comes naturally, or like the name of a friend, it comes naturally, right? The goal is, that through these techniques, you become familiar with the letters, their names, their sounds, so that when you see it, you immediately recognize it and it moves from your, your perception straight from your brain to your mouth and you're immediately saying it. And of course, you're, you're, you're combining with other letters and the vowels, which is what we're going to do next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Um, a few announcements before we close out. Some of you have asked me if we are going to have class next week. I know next Monday is Memorial Day. The plan is that we are going to have class next week um, at eight o'clock. So if you have a big blowout party scheduled, so do it a little bit early so that you can join us. Um, if you won't be able to join, please, please, please email me 
so that I can get you set up with what you need before and after the class. So if you can't make, if you know that you can't make it, let me know. Like I said, these classes will be recorded and so you can get it and you're not gonna miss it. But if you're not gonna be joining live, just let me know. Let's get, let's get the communication open so that I can make sure that you have what you need and you're ready and, and keeping pace with where we're at. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it and found it to be fun. Um, there are, of course, inherent challenges with doing this online next week. But we're going to hopefully break down some of those barriers by creating breakout rooms where you'll be with one or two other people and you'll be able to test each other, of course, in a fun environment, <laughs> no high stakes testing over here, and just have fun with the cards and with the practice and mixing things up and going out of order. So that's all going to happen next week as we learn the rest of the letters of the alphabet, of the Hebrew alphabet, the alphabet. And we then begin to start putting stuff together and adding the vowels and all this stuff as the course rolls on. Um, I recommend, if possible, to, that, to download and access this app. Again, it's the R-I-I-H, but it's actually called, of course, Read It in Hebrew. That's the program we are using in the Hebrew course, Read It in Hebrew. It should work on all devices. Um, if you have any issues with it, um, or can't get it, let me know. Um, otherwise, you should be getting, all of you should be receiving, if you haven't yet, the flashcards imminently in the next few days. If you signed up today, then just give it another two or three days. You'll get it, hopefully, please God, very soon, definitely by the end of the week, assuming that no uh, no unforeseen circumstances with the, with the, with the delivery services. Okay, all right. All right. yes. There's Mom. a shuffle button on the app. Yes. Okay, yes. you want to tell people about that, it. That, thank you for reminding me. Yes, there is a shuffle button, which means that you could, when you click on the lesson, let's say tonight you would click on lesson one, right? So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to just click on lesson one and it shows me, the, hold on, where's my, oh, I'm looking at yours, right? So it shows you the letter, Aleph, and then you, you hit the next, no, sorry, wrong way. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. All right, then you, oh, you scroll through, you got the bat, you got the vet, gimel, et cetera. Well, that's, um, that's, that's in the right order. But then there is, of course, the shuffle button at the bottom. You can mix up the playlist. And now, wow, look at that guy. I, I, I had a final cuff. That's like, that's like the unicorn right there. I got a final cuff <laughs> out of nowhere. So look at that luck of the draw with, the, with my shuffle button. But shuffle is a great way for you to test yourself to see your recall. The objective is you're not, it's not about reading tonight. It's about searing the images and the names and the sounds of those letters in your brain for recall. We're building the steps, literally building the mechanics. And then by the time we put it together, it's going to be easy breezy. All right. Thank you for joining me tonight. Any other questions? Final thoughts, final questions? No. Okay. Please put in at least 10 minutes a day. Give me 10 minutes a day. I sound like a Peloton instructor. Give me at least 10 minutes a day with practice, okay? 10 minutes of practice a day. <laughs> I'm just not wearing spandex. Give me 10 minutes a day, which probably is a good thing right now. 10 minutes a day for the practice at least for this, for this stuff, all right? You got this? Yes? You're with me? All right. I want to wish everybody Lila Tov. I think going forward... We're probably going to be about 75 minutes. It looks like 9.15 looks like the magic number. So thank you all. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for being here. Thanks for being part of it. And God bless. Lila Tov. Lila Tov. We'll see you all. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye. Don't forget to reach out with any questions. Take care.